in geometry problems, sometimes there are many different configurations of a problem that need to be taken into consideration at once. One tool that can help get rid of the pains of casework is directed angles. To see how this works, take a look at this angle. Normally, angles are always positive, so if we move point A across line BC, the resulting angle is also positive. However, with directed angles, these two angles are assigned different signs. In particular, we have the following, where we can use an arc drawn on the angle to represent a directed angle. Note that there is no formalized notation for directed angles, so keep in mind that you must define directed angle notation if you are to write up a proof. In this equation, one angle is in clockwise order, while the other is in counterclockwise order. Adding signs give more fidelity to angles as opposed to just taking the absolute value with normal angle conventions. In addition, we also usually take directed angles mod 180 degrees. Combining these two new conditions, we can get some interesting properties which we'll explore. Say we have three points, A, B, and C, and we want to prove they're collinear. We can add a fourth point, P, and if we prove that angle PAB equals angle PAC, A, B, and C are collinear, right? However, there are a couple of problems with this. First, our condition of angle PAB equals angle PAC does not necessarily tell us that B and C are on the same side of AP. We could have this configuration as well. In addition, if A was instead between B and C, we would have that angle PAB equals 180 minus angle PAC. Fortunately, if we replace this with directed angles, everything works out. In particular, we can say that points A, B, and C are collinear if and only if directed angle PAB is equal to directed angle PAC. The added signs of directed angles prevents the case when B and C are on different sides of AP, and mod 180 allows us to handle different permutations of A, B, and C. Let's now take a look at another interesting application of directed angles. Recall that for a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD, we have the following property. However, this equation becomes false when we swap points B and C, but there is a solution to this, directed angles. When we replace this equation with a directed angle version, we get this. It turns out that a quadrilateral is cyclic if and only if this equation is true. If that seems too crazy to believe, take a moment to convince yourself. Now, it is clear how directed angles can simplify cases. Usually, you can just first write up a solution for a specific case and then generalize it with directed angles. However, there are some cases where directed angles should not be used. For example, if the problem statement only works for a specific case, then generalizing might make the problem statement false. Also, avoid directed angles if you need to divide, since that does not work with modulus. That being said, Directed angles are still a very useful tool to have, but it may take some time to get an intuitive feel for them. Thanks for watching.